Hello there. Welcome back to my channel, Snips by Kelly. I'm Kelly, and tonight I have a simple but pretty single page layout here that has just a tiny bit of background inking, stenciling, stamping, and tri blend markering. I thought it would be perfect for either a beginner or someone who's been nervous about adding tiny treatments to the back of their pages. I've been working through the featured artwork in our brand new March April idea book, and I love this one that uses the Easter. Sunday stamp set as well as a sentiment from the Spring Bunny stamp and thin cut set. You can substitute anything that you like but that's what we're going to be using on this featured artwork today. So I have a four by six vertical photo that has a four and an eighth by six and an eighth white daisy photo mat. So you can see that I've pressed this stamp into my ink pad and I'm going to use the soft backside of my Versa mat. I have an all-purpose mat that's wipeable over the top, and then I have it mounted on a block that is the closest, closest in size to the stamp. And I'm dancing it around my intense black ink, and I'm looking at it to see if I'm getting good coverage. Especially if it's a new stamp, it might be a little hard to get good coverage, and you wanna season it by stamping over and over. Sometimes these larger stamps can be a little bit of a challenge to get a good stamp and the general rule is to go straight down and back up. If it's a larger stamp, you can hold it in place for a few seconds. And then sometimes if I have stamped it up, uh, uh, stamped it several times and I feel like I don't have good coverage, I'll even come in with a black tri-blend marker and barely, I'm not even coloring, I'm just dot, 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 just barely touching to fill in just a couple little spaces. Usually you can stamp off enough times to get a super good stamp, especially if you have that foam in the background and you have a really moist ink pad. So we do have re-inkers for stamp pads that we can run over the top if your stamp pad is getting dry. And once you have good coverage and you feel happy with your stamp, we're actually going to fussy cut this one out. Some come with with die cuts and thin cuts, but a good tip about fussy cutting is to allow the scissors to do the work and actually rotating the paper and leaving a teeny tiny white edge around whatever you're cutting out and then it makes it look nice and clean. It's easier than trying to get it super perfect and it makes it look like a thin cut. Now if you truly are beginning out there, I'm going to link in the description another process video for another layout that I did and I covered all kinds of product tips, techniques, of uh, all of those things that would help you in the beginning, just from things uh, such as cleaning your stamps and getting the right block and how to season your stamps and some of the different materials and supplies that you might not be familiar with if you're beginning. This video is just simply going to cover a tiny bit of background ink blending, stamping, and a little tiny bit of tri-blend markering and stenciling just for those people that are a little bit afraid, I was really nervous the very first time I stamped on a page. And it sounds silly, like it's just paper, right? But sometimes I would get some pages assembled and then I would look at the instructions and see that they stamped or they did something directly on the page. So sometimes you can get by with that by stamping on white daisy and fussy cutting around, even if the master uh, doesn't show that, but it kind of makes you feel better when you're first beginning, but you also just get more and more comfortable with practice. So I have a 12 by 12 linen piece of cardstock for the background base, and then I have an 11 and 3 quarters by 11 and 3 quarters white daisy piece over the top of that, and then I'm going to add a piece of our March, April season mix-ins that is 4 and 3 quarters by 11 and a half, and I'm just going to center that on the left-hand side. If you don't have these papers, just use any Anything that you have. It's just great practice. I have a three quarters by 11 and a half piece of our Honey Bunny uh, pattern paper. And then there's a sticker from the sticker, Honey Bunny sticker sheet here that has some little leaves on it. And it's about a quarter of an inch by uh, trimming it by 11 and a half. And then another little pattern paper piece from Honey Bunny that is one half by 11 and a half. And another sticker from the Honey 
bunny sticker sheet that has some stitched lines. Very basic. That's it. That's our background. And then I'm going to put a four and a half by six and a half inch piece of peach cardstock to add another photo mat. Adding photo mats really elevates your pages. So you can double mat your photos or single mat your photos and it adds an extra contrasting color and it's super easy. So I'm just going to overlap that across the paper strips that we created and put that in place. And then we're going to do a little bit of that beginning treatment to the page. And don't be nervous. There's no right or wrong. That's what I love about scrapbooking is that if you make a boo-boo, most often people don't even know that you've made the boo-boo. You're the only one who thinks it's a boo-boo and it can actually um, just look like you meant to do that. So we have this little four by four dot stencil as well as an, a dot embossing folder. I'm just going to take a blending brush and I'm going going to use a little bit of Seabrook ink and I like to always practice and this will make you feel better. You could do sage ink, you could do Seabrook ink, any kind of a lighter green ink and I'm actually going to lay that stencil down and just barely rub around and it's just kind of gonna you know give a little bit of a hue in the background. We're just going to rub a little bit of ink in the background of that. We're going to do a little bit on the top of that photo mat and then we're going to do quite a bit down here on the lower right so that when we add that piece that we stamped it will just kind of show all the way around the outside of that. Some of it won't show, some of it will be covered up, but it's just to show a little bit of that treatment peeking out underneath to add an added element. Now I'm coming back into that Seabrook ink and I'm just making a nice rub of that ink to make a little hue over the top of that stenciling. And it's going to be just enough, little tiny bits. And when I first started doing stamping, stenciling, and markering, I did it in really small doses. I would just add a teeny bit and I felt really conservative uh, because sometimes people just go all out, but I just started with a tiny bit, a little bit on an edge, a little bit under a piece, a little bit peeking out under a sticker, and do a tiny bit until you feel super comfortable. So now I'm going to take that Hello Spring stamp set and I'm using that same Seabrook ink, but I felt like it wasn't quite showing up. Um, so you can use the Seabrook or you can go back in with one shade darker like the Sage ink. And then you're just going to stamp right up on top. We have a little line in our stamping blocks that helps you line up your stamp and always stamp on scrap paper and then make sure that you've wiped your block on the bottom uh, so that it, when you're pressing down it doesn't get extra ink into things and it works really great. So this is an older tool that Close to My Heart had which is a one inch circle punch. So whatever method you might have, whether it's a punch, whether it's a thin cut, whatever method you might have to make stickers, if you don't have a method, or stickers, circles, if you don't have a method to make circles, you could add some circle stickers or uh, you could add a scalloped uh, strip or another sticker right here on the edge. Don't get hung up by it needing to be extra. All we're doing is an adding some decorative shapes or a decorative element very simply and easily to the side of that photo. So I used a one inch circle punch. You could use one and a fourth. You could use two. You could use uh, cut them in half. You could use a, a banner, a border, anything, a piece of paper to add another color to the side of that photo mat. Now there are some dovetailed banners that are left over on my Honey Bunny stickers. They were longer, but I actually believe I trimmed them so that I could just use little bits, but you can just find three little pieces, whether it be an arrow sticker, a dovetailed sticker, a banner sticker, or whether you're just using pieces of paper, three little strips that you can put up at the top and you can make a dovetail uh, by simply snipping about a half an inch up 
from the center of that banner and then coming in from either side and meeting in the middle on that. And that's a simple and easy way to make a dovetailed banner. Adding those little strips up the top is just a decorative element. If you happen to have some foam tape, you can add a heart sticker up at the top there with some foam tape and add dimension. It's such a cute layout and I love that uh, it's simple and it uses just a teeny bit of each of the techniques. Not a lot, but just a teeny bit to give you a little bit of a feel for how it feels to add what they call treatments to the back of pages. Treatments are just anything that you do to elevate the backs of the pages. It can be splattering, it can be ink rubbing, it can be stenciling, it can be stamping, it could be distressing the edges. Those are just referred to as treatments. So I'm adding Adding a little bit of foam tape again all of these stickers come from the sticker sheet from the honey bunny collection just grab anything you happen to have and make it work it's just good practice so now we have the Easter Sunday stamp set and I have three tri blend markers here and I have a dull green I have a let's see a uh, light yellow blend or is it the golden yellow blend let me double check those colors for you really quick okay coral blend dull green blend and the light yellow blend and honestly the light yellow blend is not going to show at all uh, because I actually add gems to the center so what I'm doing is I'm going over these flowers with the light coral blend marker and then it's a simple basic technique to first cover an image with light come back in with medium or dark on the natural lines in the stamp and then go back over it with the light again and if all you do is do light and medium or light and dark and that's all you do to begin that's what I do I don't do a lot of fancy shading because I consider myself relatively beginning at tri-blend markering I've gotten a little fancier over time and there's makers out there that have incredible incredible coloring skills and do very detailed coloring I have a tendency to do the same pattern where I cover the image in light come back in with medium or dark on the natural lines so you can see on those flowers I'm just rubbing in the center to make that center look dark and then coming back in with the light and I repeat that with all of the flowers and then I actually repeat that with the leaves as well so I go in with a light dull green come back in with the medium dull green in the natural lines and then go back in with the light dull green same pattern and then I color in the center of the flowers with the yellow and the um, and then I actually put I think like three little bitty sparkle gems in the middle over the top of the yellow so the yellow does show just a teeny tiny bit but not much um and uh but it's just enough to give it a really really pretty hue there i love it and so just practicing again i always when I get ready to marker an image, especially if the image is directly on a page, always marker on the scrap paper and experiment with light, medium, and dark so that you know that you're going to like it before you actually start doing an image. I always recommend tri-blend markering on an image that isn't directly on the page first so that you get a little bit of practice, but honestly, these markers are so amazing. They blend out after they've had a chance to connect with each other and I think I did misspeak I think I said light yellow blend and I think it's the gold golden yellow blend here so sorry about that and that's just a tiny bit in the middle and honestly once you put the bling in there it won't show so when you go over it with the light and then you come back in with the medium it takes a split second to you'll start to see those colors kind of look a little differently and then when you rub lightly around that they sort of start to smooth out instead of having a really distinct line it's the combination of the two colors together will blend those markers and make that look super smooth often when you're looking at the coloring you're like how does that just blend together and there's no sharp coloring line it's because the two colors together in a spectrum noir marker 
do the blending for you if you gently rub around. So here I'm doing those green leaves, a light, blend, light uh, side, and then coming back in with the medium. You can even do a couple tiny little spots with dark uh, so that you have some tones in that. This is such a pretty stamp set. It's so gorgeous. I love it. And it makes a perfect title. And then we've done it. We've done some basic rubbing of ink in the background. We've done a little bit of rubbing with a blending brush with that tiny dot stencil. It's a great stencil to start with. I think they're like $1.95 or something like that. So it's not a big investment if you wanted to start small with a little uh, with a little uh, stencil. And then a, a classic dot stencil is perfect for anything. You can do it for backgrounds of cars. Cards. You can do it for just little bitty backgrounds in the be in behind things. And it also is wonderful because you don't have to be perfect. You're just going to do lighter and darker by rubbing over the top. So now I'm adding some foam dots. So we, you could do foam tape. You can do foam dots. You can do any kind of dimensional. You can actually put it flush on the page. You don't have to worry if you don't like a lot of dimension when you're first starting out. Uh, that's a whole nother thing thing if you end up liking popping things up. It's a really easy way to elevate pages by adding dimension to things uh, and it's easy to do and it's not nerve-wracking. It's super easy. So now we're going to just toggle that. My little granddaughter Hattie Elaine here has a little spring dress on and she's looking so cute getting ready for church and so I'm adding uh, that just to offset. I think the colors are going to work perfect for her dress and the colors are going to work perfect for the pages. So now um, I have some little stickers again that are left over on my Honey Bunny sticker sheet, some little hearts. So we'll add a few little hearts around. A lot of times there's rules of three. You might add three little gems in a cluster or uh, three little stickers in a cluster. And I'm just sliding off some bitty sparkles here to finish off your page. You always want to finish off with just a teeny little bit of decorating with embellishments and uh, kind Kind of uh, a variety of stickers, embellishments, stamping, and stenciling, and it makes for the perfect combination. So now here's where I'm adding those three little bitty sparkles in the center of each one of those coral flowers just to finish that up and add some finishing touches and you did it. So I hope if you are a beginning scrapbooker or if you are just beginning, maybe you've been scrapbooking for a while, but you've been nervous like me to add things directly to your pages. I hope that you enjoyed just a couple little tiny beginning techniques of blending, stamping, stenciling and markering all of those little things really add a lot of wow to your pages so even a simple page here that is understated with a super simple background can be elevated and so so pretty with some of those simple and easy techniques i'm getting happy i'm loving that be sure that you do check out my linked video that has all kinds of tips for beginners in it i will link that here in the description. I'll link all the supplies that I've used in the description as well. And I hope you'll reach out to me. Hit subscribe the notifications bell, and shoot me a comment if you are a beginning scrapbooker or a beginning stamper and um, that if you haven't done any treatments or techniques on your pages before and you're going to give it a try. I'm showing a couple cards here that have some of those same techniques in them just in case you wanted a little shot of that. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again next time right here on Snips by Kelly. Bye-bye.